you're never going to find one of these. The odds are just so against you that there's no sense on earth that you should even be looking for them. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about the philosophy, the actual real truth on reselling and values and stuff like that. Now, there's tons of different things you can sell. You can pretty much sell anything you want these days and make a profit if you do it right, if you have quantity, if the price is right. Lots of factors like that. Now, obviously, you want to sell the most valuable and expensive items you can that give you the biggest return on your investment. The ROI, return on your investment. So whatever area you're selling in, there are some higher valued items that obviously you would rather be selling. That's the whole game of doing this. Buy and sell as much valuable items as you can to make the most money as quick as possible with the least amount of work. Now, everybody assumes from, I, I would imagine, tons of videos just showing the best, most expensive things out there that it's just easy enough just to find those sorts of items and not worry about anything else. That is so far from the truth, it's not even funny. The majority of what we find are in the mid-range, and that's our bread and butter. I've said it for years on this channel. I do find, though, extremely rare and valuable items priced into the four and $5,000 range multiple times every year. Now, we also find a ton of items in the mid-margin range there, below 1000 to, say, $200. Those are still pretty tough to find, but not nearly as impossible as some of the $1,000, $5,000, $10,000 items out there. Now, the most average and common thing that most everybody finds are the items that are worth, say, less than $200. And those are usually, like they are with us, the bread and butter of your business. The majority of what you sell are probably $25 to, say, $75 items. They would fall in that range. If your profit margins are good, Ours are great because we pay almost nothing. We buy in bulk almost every time, which is what I would recommend everybody doing because you can uh, easily make a ton of profits by selling cheaper items without having to worry about any of the other aspects that come with it. There's a huge potential for fraud for high value items. There's um, damage, there's insurance issues, just all sorts of different things that can arise from selling higher dollar items. If you get ripped off on a higher dollar item, you're out a lot of money compared to 25 to 75 bucks. And eBay or whatever site you're on, Amazon, Etsy, doesn't always side with the seller. So just keep those thoughts in mind. Now with the average niche or say category that we sell in, the odds of finding a thousand plus dollar item in that category are extremely slim. You'd be lucky an average person to find at least one of those in an entire year. Now, we buy in bulk. I buy in massive bulk. In one week, we could get five, ten thousand 10,000 items added to inventory in one single week. And in that case, we're looking at sometimes 10, 20, 50 times as many of those same sorts of items as most other people. So we do find a decent amount of 1,000 plus dollar items. Not every month, though, but still a decent amount considering how rare they are. The same goes for, say, a $500 item. The average person may, if they're lucky, find one a month, one every other month. Now, again, it depends on how many items you're going through, how many items you're seeing, what type of quantity you're getting in. Just like when you sell more items, you make more money. If you buy more items, your opportunity increases to find better items. You're looking at more, you're buying more. You're not just looking at a handful or buying one-offs at a thrift store or garage sale. You're purchasing a bulk inventory with multiple potentials to turn a huge profit on higher dollar items. Some of the best areas that we've been in that routinely we've been able to find $1,000 to $5,000 items have been 45 records. 78s, we have been able to find the $500 mark more often than many other categories as well. Trade cards, tobacco related items, we've sold into the thousands per item on many, many, many occasions. But again, it's rare. It's not something that you should ever expect to happen. It's always that added cool bonus. Wow, out of nowhere, I found something worth a lot of money. 
uh, here's a good story. There's a, a thrift store that we've been to quite a few times. Haven't been there in quite some time, but they had some jewelry in a case in there. And they were $10 rings. And they were marked gold with China and some other odd countries on them. Now, I didn't have a test kit. I didn't have anything like that. So I just bought one. And I drove to one of my one of my places I take scrap gold, estate jewelers. I've got a video on estate jewelers. And um, sure enough, it was real. So I drove back and bought every other piece that was in their cabinet, every single thing out of there. Now, I didn't expect any of this. I just expected it was going to be a big waste of time. But that purchase made us well over $15,000 at the end of the day. And my wife still kept quite a bit of the jewelry at that point. Now, in that case, I think we invested like 375 bucks. There were some earrings and like 30 plus rings that we had bought for 10 bucks a piece. And we ended up walking out of estate jewelers with, I don't know, like almost $6,000 right away. And we kept a whole bunch of them because the wife wanted to go through and on and on and on. But at the end of the day, we made a ton of money out of nowhere. It wasn't planned. It wasn't expected. It was a place where I have never found something like that before. Nothing, no expectations whatsoever. I never ever expect to find anything in the thousand plus range, to be honest with you. I know I do find a, a, a decent amount, again, only because of volume. When we weren't doing multiple bulk purchases every single week, I never found all this quantity of stuff. So it's not something that I have ever in my life expected. I am perfectly fine selling the $200 and down items. We don't list super cheap items either. I don't list anything really under $15 at all anymore. Obviously, it'd be nice to list higher dollar items, and then I wouldn't have to sell as many. But again, I am perfectly fine being in that mid-range price section there. That's perfectly fine. I can make far more going after those types of items than trying to hunt down $1,000, $5,000 items because I'll have to be spending 50 times as much labor time out there trying to find these items with no guarantee that I would ever find them to begin with. I never count anything like that. I never do any of that kind of stuff. I never count my eggs before they hatch ever. I always assume it's just going to be a typical find no matter what. Sometimes I'm excited to see what I may find or what may turn up when I'm going to a picker's house or meeting somebody somewhere. But again, it's never assumed ever, even if I've seen the pictures, even if we've already had a deal made and I'm, I'm pretty sure they're OK. I never assume until I see them what's going on. Many times I may assume something's going to be an awesome purchase, one of the best deals out there. I get there, the reproductions or they've been heavily cleaned, destroying the patina and killing the value of the item. Many times people will say, I got this, I know it is, this is why I know it is, it's been passed on in my family, I'll, I'll get there to look at something, and, and it's modern day, or at least made, you know, the 40s or 50s, and they had no clue that it was not old, or wasn't historical, or it wasn't original. It happens all the time, all the time. The majority of what I run into that, you know, are said to be some high value thing, you know, I want this much for it. Like 99% of everything like that I go to look at isn't worth it, isn't real, isn't in the right condition, it doesn't have provenance, something else is wrong with it. Like 99% of the time. I, I Again, the minute you drop the assumption that you're going to always be finding all these great items, you'll do far better because you won't be killing your expectations when you're going out there day after day and you don't find something that's worth a small fortune. $500 is a small fortune to a ton of people out there. So again, don't worry about those higher dollar value items. You can make a perfectly fine living. You can expand your business. You can make just as much money as those people who randomly find a thousand to five thousand dollar item just by sticking in that middle 25 to say two hundred dollar section. And it has done us wonders. So when we do find a five hundred dollar, a thousand dollar, two, three, four thousand dollar item, it is a super, super big win. It's a big major boost. It builds up the adrenaline. It gets you going. You know, out of nowhere, you've got an extra thousand or 500 bucks to the bottom line out of nowhere. Don't count on those fines. That's not the real world. Probably the majority of what we find and buy to resell, like 75 or 80% of it, is probably in the 25 to $200 range. That's, that's most of what we sell. And then maybe another 15 or 20% of that 
are the 200 to say a thousand dollar price range again if we're lucky if things are going good it's a good month a normal month that's about average and then maybe maybe we've got five percent at the end of the day that may be that thousand dollar item and that's over an entire year again it comes down to how many items you source how much you buy how much you go through how much you're able to look at in general that's the key to this now if you want to increase the odds of finding those rare 1000 or plus dollar items you've got to do some steps you've got to advance your business when i was only selling in a category two and not buying in bulk we may not have found a thousand dollar item in an entire year back 20 years ago or whenever it was it didn't show up but as we learned the items better and better and had more knowledge of them we got better at finding higher dollar higher value items the longer we did it the better we got and not only that if you're only looking for one specific category of item your odds are greatly reduced on finding value again if, if, if it's the category you specifically only want to sell in that's fine but if you're doing this more so for money and, and stuff like that you want to make revenue expand the amount of categories you sell in instead of just selling in one category sell in many we at least have 50 categories that we sell in and we sell many different things on many different platforms and many different stores so we try to have the best place to sell them as well that helps to garner it but the more items that you know the more categories that you play in the higher the chances are that you're going to find an item that's worth that rare price of a thousand dollars or better or even five hundred dollars or better the majority of the time if we're selling a couple thousand dollar items in one month they're not in the same category I'd never usually be able to do it. There's been a few different time frames when we've done it phenomenally well. We had some uh, cigarette packs from the Victorian era. We did like six or seven thousand dollars in those in just one day on one weekend. So I mean, the value on certain things is different if you're able to get a collection. But most of the time, you're going to do so much better once you understand a niche to expand and learn more niches because then you'll be able to look for multiple different thousand dollar items in many different categories instead of just one small select niche that has a limited reach or a limited availability of collectibles. If I go to a store, I can look for China plates that may be a thousand dollars, Paragon or something like that. I can look for jewelry. I can look for military items that could be worth that. If I'm looking at a button show and looking for buttons or something, there's buttons that are worth thousands of dollars. But you've got to know each one of those niches, those categories to do best. Autographs. If you know the right autograph, you've got some sources, you've done it for a long time, and then you can easily increase your chances of finding $500, $1,000 autographs. A book, first editions. If you, again, have done first editions or books for a long time, your odds are greatly increased on finding a better first edition or an autographed one out in the wild and getting that $1,000 book sale. You know, it, it's that's what it takes. Action figures. If you look at tons of action figures out there, you may be lucky enough to find a specific action figure that may be worth a thousand or more dollars. Whatever category you're in, whatever you are selling, chances are I would hope there's items that are worth five hundred or a thousand dollars in those categories. If you confine yourself to one single category, you're confining yourself to a limited availability of those rare thousand dollar plus items realistically speaking though they're extremely rare for most people if you're looking at limited quantity of items the longer you do this the better you'll be and the more of them that you will luckily find but anyway that's what i have for you today hopefully that gives you some ideas some thoughts if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends
really good Pabst. America's premium beer since 1844. Pabst. A lot to look forward to.